There is a sign outside a certain restaurant in central London which reads, If you are not satisfied with anything we serve, the chef will eat it himself. Well, there's a thought-provoking claim. Leaving aside, with reluctance, the obvious opportunities it affords for hideous practical jokes, if I was that chef, I would be very careful not to give anyone any reason to want to get their own bag on me, I'm not quite sure what it is he thinks he's proving by this boast. If you don't like your steak and the chef comes out and devours it like a ravening tiger, what precisely has he proved? That the food is edible? That seems to be like a fairly modest claim, you know, for a restaurant. Everything we serve can be digested by the human gastrointestinal tract. It may not look like food, it may not smell like food, it may not have the texture of food, but give us the word and our chef will prove that it is by gamely forcing it into his face. There's nothing coming out of our kitchen that couldn't, in extremis, be shoved into your mouth in a sweaty panic, laboriously chewed and agonisingly swallowed if, say, you were in fear for your job. I mean, it's hardly a Michelin star. Besides, people can eat all sorts of things. For instance, there was that Frenchman who used to eat shopping trolleys and broken glass. What if he's gone into catering in his retirement? In his prime, Monsieur Monge too once ate an entire light aircraft. And now, to finish off, he's going to try the house hummus. There is one sort of restaurant, though, where I would welcome a version of this policy. Indeed, I would make it mandatory. And it has nothing to do with the quality of the food. It's all about the presentation. I would very much like it if, when presented with a sandwich of Scooby-Doo proportions, or a burger where the artful construction of ingredients has resulted in a striking-looking tower of foodstuffs considerably taller than it is wide, the structural integrity of which is maintained only by a thick wooden stake, I could say, well, that looks delicious. However, on this occasion, I am going to play my joker and ask the chef to come out here and demonstrate to me exactly how he envisaged it being eaten. Once he'd done that, I'd quite happily eat the rest of it myself. I just don't want to have to be the first person to make the call on whether I'm supposed to take a knife and fork to this creation or attempt to crush it down from two foot tall to the approximate height of an open mouth. And I feel bringing this rule in would eliminate what I fear to be a regrettable and growing tendency among chefs. Not to give a moment's thought to the logistical problems of the poor sod who has to eat the food, but to concentrate entirely on making the people at the table go woo. You know, like they do with a Knickerbocker glory. Woo. The wow factor, as estate agents say. Except you'll only get a woo, not a wow, because at the end of the day, it's only lunch. Well, I'm sorry, but it's different with Knickerbocker glories. Or is it Knickerbocker's glory? I'm never sure. Once you've gone woo, you can remove the sparklers and umbrellas and other detritus and eat the thing with a spoon. A hamburger that looks like the Trump Tower is a different matter. A hamburger is already a glorified sandwich, and whilst that was an inspired piece of glorification, I don't want to see it glorified any further than that. You should never go woo at a sandwich. It's not a woo food.